Alrighty, well now we come to a TV show that's premiering in 2015 that I'm actually looking forward to, which is, of course, Agent Carter. Now, this is a Marvel TV show, one of several Marvel TV shows that are coming out in, in, uh, in the future. <clears throat> However, what makes this one different is actually, actually a few things. A, it's focusing on, on a popular character from the movies. Um, one character that I, that I actually think did not get enough screen time, which is that of uh, uh, Agent Pe Peggy Carter, Haley Atwell's character from, from the Captain America movie. Um, who, in my opinion, was the best female, she was the best, uh, I hate to use this term, love interest in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. I, in my opinion, she is probably the best female character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe at this point. Um, that may be subject to change with future movies, um, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, um, might have some strong female characters in, in Gamora and whatever, but, um, but right now I'm just talking about the t terrestrial, um, the terrestrial heroes, and and you know Peggy Carter I I thought was really endearing, and and the fact that they were able to pull off such a such a strong female character in a period setting where, where uh, you know it was in the, it was in the 40s women, I mean as much as uh, as much as we've already hit this uh, nail on the head many times. You know, in in numerous discussions of gender equality and whatever, the the truth of the matter is that women were treated un, unequally in in those days. Um, in my opinion, that's what makes it all the more impressive. Again, that they were able to pull off such this 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 uh, such a likable character and such a a strong character as Peggy Carter, and and I think some of that. A large part of that had to do with Haley Atwell's performance, as well as the as well as the script, the very charming script. Um, and and I'm excited about Agent Carter for a few reasons. A, um, obviously it's it's uh, focusing more on a character that I really like, um, played by, once again played by an actress that I really like. Um, because because really there's there's very little room to explore her cinematically at this point because like like I said, she's she is a forties character. She is She's a character from the first Captain America movie, and like everyone else in the supporting cast of that movie, she is uh, she is uh, unable to be expanded upon in the modern day, or at least uh, or at least with any kind of detail, because because obviously you could show her as as an old lady in Winter Soldier, which they did, um, but you couldn't you can't really put her in any kind of uh, action scenario, or you can't really. You can't really do as much with her in the modern day setting as you could back in the 40s setting. So there's that. And also, just expanding upon the 40s setting, I think, is an intriguing idea. Because because Captain America, the first Captain America, was really the only time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe where we got to see this uh, very different version of the Marvel, of the Marvel world. Um... <clears throat> And I thought, for what for what it was, Captain America did did offer a uh, a sl a slight comic book e uh, take on on real nineteen forties America. So <clears throat> so I think so I think that particular setting is ripe for expansion on TV because, like I said, we only got one movie to really get to know this setting now, and then all of a sudden, Captain America was whisked away to modern to the modern setting. So that he could be in the Avengers, and I and I think his his initial setting got a little bit shortchanged, as did the character of Agent Carter, because like I said, she she's not gonna show up in any kind of a covert mission in the in the modern day setting. I mean, I mean she's not gonna get her own modern day movie. She's a, uh, I mean she she's on her deathbed in in the Winter Soldier. So so yeah, an Agent Carter TV series, I think. I think it's a great idea, and and in truth, I think I think it was brought about by the fact that uh, the Agent Carter one shot was so well received. And I have seen the one shot; it is pretty good. Um, <clears throat> and the panel itself, I thought I thought was pretty 
was pretty good. They didn't really show any footage because they haven't actually started shooting yet, and that was something I actually got uh, I actually got attacked for um, when I talked about the the uh, Batman Superman panel. Is is that well they it's not like they've been shooting for for long, so it's not like they're going to have a lot of footage. Well, well here, I'm sorry to to retread old territory here. I really I really don't want to talk about this movie anymore. Um, unlike the Batman Superman thing, the the people responsible for Agent Carter actually sat down, they communicated with the audience, they they talked in detail about what they were planning to do, they didn't have any of these uh, shady secrets going on. <clears throat> but, you know, that's, that's another argument for another day when in regards to Batman Superman. So Agent Carter, Agent Carter, the, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to explore this character. It's a wonderful opportunity to further explore this setting. I'm very interested to see what they're going to do with, uh, with you know the 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 aspect of of gender inequality that was going on in in 46, I believe. I believe they said there it's going to be set. They also revealed some exciting directors, uh, episodic directors for the show, um, namely namely the Russo brothers, the the directors of Captain America 2. They're going to direct, I believe, episodes uh, two and three. They're going to direct a couple episodes, and then Joe Johnston has expressed interest in in directing an episode. They said they said that recently, just recently, they got they got a phone call that said Joe Johnston wants to direct an episode. So, and for those who don't know Joe Johnston, he directed the Rocketeer and he also directed the first Captain America movie. Um, <clears throat> so it'll be nice to see his uh, his directorial stamp back in the Marvel universe see how that translates to TV um, <clears throat> and and in addition we uh, we we will uh, potentially see the beginnings of shield in in future seasons assuming this goes for a second season um, we may see we may see some Hydra stuff um, but they've they've made it very clear that the first season is really mainly introductory I mean it's agent Carter working for the SSR um, going on missions. They're not really going to tackle anything, uh, they're not really going to uh, tackle anything from from the future at this point. They're not really going to discuss S.H.I.E.L.D. in any great in any great detail at this point. They're not really going to deal with um, with Hydra infecting S.H.I.E.L.D. like like uh, it supposedly did in in The Winter Soldier, Captain America The Winter Soldier. Um, but they have said that those would be interesting ideas for future seasons. So all overall, the panel itself was uh, was fairly well handled, despite what uh, little they had in terms of what to actually show us. But but you know they definitely seem to have some clear ideas in mind. They seemed willing to communicate with the audience. They they seemed uh, they definitely seemed excited about the project. Um, like I'm excited about the project. I actually think when it airs, I think it airs um, in the in the mid-season break of most shows. Um, it's a it's a pretty small order of episodes, I believe. I mean, unless my information is outdated, but but it airs when all the episode, all the other TV shows are on their hiatus. So so I think that'll give it a particular advantage. I don't really know how how long future seasons will be. Again, if it if it actually gets renewed, but um, like I said, I hope it's good. I hope uh, like I said, I really like this character. I would like to see her expanded upon more. Um, I would like to see what they do with. The with the 40s setting um, past what they did with with uh, the first Avenger, and uh, yeah, it's actually kind of ironic because uh, because the the thumbnail that I used for for uh, for this review is actually a poster for Agents of Shield and Agent Carter. They they kind of match the two together, um, and it's ironic because Agents of Shield is definitely the bigger project at this point. It actually it actually has gone through its first season and it act, and it actually had more people. At its panel, than Agent Carter did for for at at that panel. However, I just don't give a crap about Agents of Shield. I don't think it's a bad show or anything, um, but I've I've seen a few episodes and it just does not interest me. I, like I said, it's not a bad show. It's not poorly made. I don't really think it's that poorly written. I just I just really don't not a huge fan of the concept. I don't really think the characters are all that interesting. Um, so as a result, I didn't really. I mainly just kind of skimmed the uh, 
the Agents of Shield panel. I I watched it, but I just kind of uh, I was just kind of like I said, kind of uh, visually skimming skimming the video, only catching uh, only catching what uh, what seemed to interest me. Maybe in season two they'll get some better villains. Uh, maybe in season two they'll actually get some. They'll actually have have more of the Marvel Cinematic Universe incorporated into it. And I think that's the problem with doing something like this um, in the modern day setting. Kind of doing this, kind of doing this uh, espionage Shield show in the modern day setting, as opposed to doing it back in the forties. Is is that um, in the modern day setting you have? It's like Guy Pearce said in Iron Man three. Subtlety's kind of had its day. I mean, you have you have these these gods, you have the Avengers, you have aliens, you have all this crazy stuff happening, and then, and and it's stuff that, as a Marvel fan, you would want to see on TV, and the fact of the matter is, the TV just doesn't really have the budget capable to to sustain something like that. Whereas Agent Carter, it's a 40s setting, it's definitely, or at least on paper, it sounds like a smaller scale show. Um, doing it in Captain America setting, you, you basically know what you are going to get, in that you're not going to have all of these aliens, you're not going to have all of these gods running around, presumably. At most, we might actually see some uh, some other 40s heroes show up. Maybe uh, maybe Captain America's Howling Commandos show up um, at one point. Maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm not really that well versed in, in, in the 40s era superheroes, but... But yeah, but you know, if anything, Agent Carter might actually might actually benefit more from being on TV than than uh, Agents of Shield, because Agents of Shield, when I was watching it, I and maybe you could chalk this up to me missing the idea. Um, when I was watching it, I said, you know, wouldn't it be so much cooler if we could get back to the superheroes? Because a, they're more interesting, and b, um, we have shown that this this that basically anything is is possible in this universe. So. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm more excited about Agent Carter than I am about Season 2 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, I still think DC is actually... DC is losing currently in terms of in terms of big-budget movies overall. But, like, like in what in what projects they're able to get off the ground, so on and so forth. I mean, they're, they're definitely losing um, at this point, probably because Marvel has such a colossal head start on them. But uh, but in my opinion, DC is currently winning in terms of in terms of live action TV because they have Arrow. They're fixing to they're fixing to have the Flash. Um, Gotham is is getting ramped up. Who owns Constantine? I um I want to say DC owns Constantine, and if I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me. I'm not I'm not well versed in in Constantine at all, so. Um, I'll probably be talking about that, and if I did get that wrong, then I will correct myself. But yeah, Agent Carter, please be good. I mean, it could potentially open up for... I mean, it could potentially pave the way for other, for other comic book projects with female leads, because honestly, female, female-centric comic book uh, movies and TV shows have not exactly had the best luck. I'm not. I'm not saying all of them have have been crap, but I'm mainly referring to the ones recently. You know, Elektra. Yeah, 